here at the Hummingbird Cottage, I set out salt dough and Play-Doh for the children to come and explore and play. In the late 1990s, when I was just starting my educator journey, I didn't have a lot of money or resources. So I looked in search for inspiration. Who I found might surprise you. Martha Stewart, of all people. She helped to show me how to create beauty and special moments with simple resources and very little money. I remember one time she had this glorious banner out of little paper stars. And those paper stars were made out of paper bags. Very little money was needed to create that magic. I was inspired to create the Hummingbird Cottage to provide the same practical inspiration for educators and parents. Today, I'm setting out an invitation to play, an invitation that is simple and easy to create, economical. The night before, I prepare and make the salt dough as well as the Play-Doh. And I have the recipes below in the notes. I also went to a local grocery store and purchased a rosemary tree and a bundle of evergreen. I gathered scissors, cookie cutters, rolling pins, and I have wooden planks I've collected over the years from thrift stores, garage sales, and I set them out on the table as I prepared for the children to come. I find it important to take time in this space to set up an invitation with beauty and intention. In fact, research has found that items that are unusual help children not only to engage, but help them to go into deeper play. And deeper play builds executive functioning skills like planning and organization. The play might start out as you would typically expect. Padding, rolling, measuring out proportions, tearing, negotiating how much to share, exploring the tools, seeing what options are available, testing out how far they can go with the play, testing out theories and it starts to evolve. My grandchildren started to create realistic creations like a snowman or cars, exploring the structure, narrating with each other. As more children came into the space, and as my grandchildren took the play deeper, you'll notice some children started to explore the Play-Doh. Once again, padding, tearing, rolling. Now, they've seen the scissors and they start to cut and see what happens when you put the herbs inside the Play-Doh folding it in. And at this phase, lots of benefits are happening. You can see the fine motor skills being developed, the theorizing, and the sustained focus building. But the real magic happens in the moments that have maybe frightened some educators. And if you take a chance with it, you might see the magic I see with it. Cross-pollination. It's when a child takes an item that is in one area and brings it over to another. 
On this day, one of the children grabbed the evergreens and carefully placed them in the bare tree by housekeeping. Then he took the scissors and started to snip off some of the evergreens and the rosemary and put them into the pots and pans. He also took the LED light candles from the block area and put them under the burners to create the illusion of fire that would warm up the herbs and whatever else he was making. At one point he said broth. Then he took the Play-Doh and the salt dough and started to press and mold it into pots and pans. He even started to utilize the drawers as an oven. And I noticed he started to roll out noodles and then he served it to another child. When you let cross-pollination take place, you support deepening a child's play. You are allowing a child the space to develop their creativity, flexibility of thinking, and planning. To make a choice, to test a theory. That's the magic and power of play. And it actually builds everything a child needs for academic learning. The simple and practical play invitation can be brought into your own classroom, learning environment, or home immediately. I encourage and invite you to be bold and give space for cross-pollination and to see where it takes the children in your care. If the idea of cross-pollination worries you, frightens you, not sure quite how it would fit into your circumstance, but you have a desire to give it a try, I have a special blog post on the Wonderled website covering my top tips on cross-pollination. You can find the link in the notes below this video to help you get started. It's 100% possible and 100% worth it. If you found this video helpful, guess what? We plan to bring a new video to you every Thursday. I'm so excited to continue sharing Children at Play and the magic of harnessing a child's wonder. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a moment. Until next time, this is Sally Hoy. Thanks for dropping by the Hummingbird Cottage.